Hello and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We've got some newbies to the show on the screen with me today, but they are not newbies to our community. Nancy Horton and Chris Horton are joining me from Horton's Nursery and Garden Center. I am meeting you guys for the very first time on Zoom, but you guys have been in our Winchester Frederick County community for a lot of years. Nancy, when did you and your husband start this business? We started it in 1976 out of our garage at our home on Cedar Creek Grade. It wasn't per se a nursery business at the time. It was a wholesale business. My husband and my brother, he was with Kmark at one time. So he picked Kmark as his business that he wanted to get into. So we would go in and clean off their counters and put fresh plants in every week or every other week. Buffalo, New York was probably one of our furthest stops all the way down into Southern Virginia. Wow. Roanoke, and we had a couple stores in North Carolina, but mostly in those areas in Maryland and Virginia and West Virginia and that kind of thing. What yeah. made you decide to expand into having a full service nursery and garden center? Well, we grew out of the garage, so we <laughs> bought the land on Route 11 South across from where Miller Honda was in that area across the street. We bought that place and then moved to the barn, and then we added greenhouses later and got into retail. Chris, did you grow up in the nursery and learning how to do landscaping and growing plants? You must have a green thumb. Yeah, I was there a lot. It saved on babysitter fees, that's for sure. I just hung out in the greenhouse and ran around. I was surrounded by a lot of things growing up and growing all sorts of things from wintertime to summer, doing landscaping installs, keeping up with all the plants that we carried. I usually stuck with the outdoor plants, being that we did the landscaping and hardscaping stuff that I was heading up. But recently... I've had to come back inside and learn all the exotic house plants that we're carrying now. And it's a lot of fun, though. You never really stop learning. There's a lot. <laughs> this is the youngest of five. So all my children have been involved in some way or another over the years. House plants are having a moment. I think the pandemic renewed people's interest in having house plants and having their homes be as green on the inside as they are on the outside. Yeah, there is something to the ability for plants to filter the air, make it fresher, and it's just a pleasing feel to be surrounded by growing living things. When did you make the move from your spot on Route 11 to where you are now on 522? Around 2007. That might have been when we opened this location on 522 South. And that's a yeah. really good location. It's easy to get in and out of. You've got plenty of space there. It's much larger when you get out of the car and come inside than you think it is as you're driving past it on 522. Yeah, it just keeps going back. <laughs> There's a lot of things behind us that you don't see from the road. What do you sell the most of this time of year? With it being winter, I feel like sometimes people think there's nothing they can grow or there's nothing they can do, but that's not really the case. No, house plants are a big thing right now. Supplies, a lot of supplies. And there's a lot of supplies for folks that want to grow indoors. We have the grow lights, the tents, and the soils to continue garden indoors all winter. And yeah, the house plants definitely. We've moved out of the point set of season. We've got some still around here decorating the greenhouse. There's nothing like that bright color with a background of green that kind of sets everything off. It's really pretty in here this time of year. But we do have some point setters. We've got those on discount right now. If you come in, we're kind of saying a dollar. Or a I did not know until recently that you can keep poinsettias year round. I think so many times people think of them as throwaway Christmas decorations, but you can keep them year round, Christmas after Christmas after Christmas. Yeah, I've seen pictures where folks in Florida and California will have tree poinsettias. What? They're native to the mountainside of Mexico, so they do live year round somewhere. And that's most all your house plants. You can keep them and in the summer, put them outside and they get really, really pretty. The leaves get so pretty. Of course, you have to bring them in when the frost comes. But my mother always kept hers till the next year. Now, I have to admit that I could kill a plastic plant. So what I depend on when I come to places like yours is the advice and the information. I would imagine you have no shortage of that having been in business as long as you have. Things have changed a lot and the technology has changed, but people still want to talk about different things. And we're always glad to try to help them if we can. 
you're always trying to keep up with the latest information. You hear the problems and issues that everyone else is having. So you keep your thumb on the pulse of the growing community. You were telling me before we started recording for the show that you're now offering hydroponic supplies. And that's something that's relatively new to the gardening arena, at least in our area. Yeah, when you're growing with hydroponics, it's not always just strictly growing in water. That's a part of it. But what that basically means is the plant is getting its nutrients from a liquid solution. So you're supplementing any kind of potting soil with adding nutrients in a liquid form. So yeah, we do carry all the liquid nutrients, the grow lights, even the indoor grow tent environment that you can control that environment. Things that can help you keep your humidity where you need it to be and your temperature and your light, the three major factors to think about when you're growing anything. I feel like that's something I would be good at because the watering part is always the worst part for me. But if it's already in the water and I can control the humidity and all the science end of it, I feel like maybe I could make something grow that way. Yeah, there's a lot of neat things people can grow in their homes. The microgreens and vegetables, you can grow a tomato plant in the wintertime. And mushrooms are a big deal. A lot of people now are growing mushrooms and then selling them at farmer's markets. We've got some new mushroom kits coming in, and the one I'm excited about is the lion's mane mushroom. It's supposed to taste that resembles a lobster tail. (laughs) Yeah, it's a lion's mane mushroom, and evidently, I haven't eaten a whole lot of it because these are the stuff that you don't see in restaurants and grocery stores all the time, simply because they don't keep as long. So it's a great way to grow it yourself. If you're growing in your home, you eat it when it's ready. This one is evidently supposed to taste just like a a lobster tail. I didn't know that. That really sounds good to me. (laughs) So when you hear about these things, you order them and then you do a dry run to make sure that it's what it's supposed to. So you have to do a trial run of a lot of these products and things to make sure that they're what you're going to tell people they are. That's true. Yeah. Currently we have several grow tents up that we're going to do demonstrations of all these growing things, the mushrooms, microgreens. It's good to have that to where folks can see it. They can make the decision of this is something I can do at home. Yeah, it's a whole lot easier to come in and be able to see a setup and then realize, do I have room for this? And how much is involved and does it need electricity or all of the things rather than just buying a kit? And then you get home and realize this thing is too tall for the room I wanted or all of these other things. So having that visual is really important. You mentioned a few minutes ago, Chris, about hardscaping and landscaping. Can you give me a like an overview of what kinds of products people can find when they come to Hortons besides the plants and the things that people can grow? We do carry hardscaping supplies. We have a concrete interlock and paver company, Knitter House. They're manufactured in Pennsylvania. We have a setup now to where you come in. We talk to you about the size of the project that you're looking for and what kind of materials you want to use. We're even looking to partner with contractors in the area to partner the homeowner with the contractor. And then once we start your planning stage, from that point, within three weeks, we can have your pavers that you chose the size, shape, delivered to your home. By then, you've had time to do your plan work, your demo, your excavation, and get some of your other bulk materials, which we may be carrying some of those items as well, like your sands and your foundation materials here on site. The fact that you'll deliver the stones, the pavers to my house is a huge bonus because sometimes that's the, how am I going to get them all in the back of my Ford Escape? So that makes it a lot nicer. And when you're talking about a patio project, you're talking about a few pallets of materials. So we coordinate with the manufacturing companies. They bring it to the home and they set it right where you're going to put the project together. Do you carry pots, big Flower pots, small flower pots, things that I can put potted plants in? Yes, we have a variety of pots. We've got some novelty pots with dinosaurs. Yes. The tiki heads are pretty neat. Yeah, we've got and some then, different things. Yeah. And then, of course, you have your classic look that people always want to go back to and bigger and variety of colors and things like that. A lot of the new stuff will be coming in going into Easter time, but we do have a lot of stock still. We've got some of the smaller pots coming early this time of year. It's good for your house plants. And then we'll be doing some larger pots for your patio combination plants and things. And that might even be something that we have organized here for folks to come. We can help them out make a combination planter in those pots when it comes to the annuals. Do you ever have people that come rolling up in there with their plant in their pot and say, something is wrong with this and I don't know what I'm doing, or it needs a bigger pot, but I don't know how big the pot should be. And you walk them through how to find a solution for their issue. 
yeah, that happens. For that reason, we have a repotting station for our customers to use. So if they come in, maybe the plant does need a new home, a new pot. They can pick out the pot. We supply the soil and we help them get it into that bigger home, a bigger pot. He made a station for it, a potting table for that reason. So that if they only have a couple plants, they don't want to buy a huge bag of potting mix when they can just come in, pick out their pots here, pick out their plants if they don't have plants, and then we allow them to pot it up. Yeah, so, and if we have time, if we're not slammed in here, we're certainly happy to help them, to help them out and give them the ropes there. That is a really good idea because you're right. Sometimes you don't need that big bag of right. potting soil mm -hmm. for two or three plants, and then yeah. you've got it, and what are you going to do with it? Some people live in apartments or small spaces. They don't have a place to store that kind of stuff. We've had people on their way to a party <laughs> and say, I need a gift. I need to bring a gift. I love this plant. If only it was in a prettier pot. We got you covered and we can send you on your way. Everybody's happy. The housewarming thing went great. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally something I would do. That is so totally something I would do. So let's take a break. Before we do, can you tell everyone what your address is and what your winter hours are? For the winter time, we're doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We're located at 2731 Front Royal Pike, which is real close to that Stephen City Walmart. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some events that you have coming up. You're doing thrifting events on a regular basis. You've got a Galentine shopping event. Will you give me details on all of those in the next segment? Definitely. Yes. We are on the screen today chatting with Nancy and Chris Horton. They are the owners of Horton's Nursery and Garden Center. We're going to learn about some events they have coming up when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Machiko, a senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School. Together with environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters, we're rebranding recycling. Unfortunately, not all plastics are recyclable. Some localities only take plastic bottles. Others take all number one and number two plastics. Almost no one takes number four through seven. Plastic bags can't go in with irregular plastic recycling, but you can drop them off in other soft plastics and film drop-off spots at most supermarkets. For more on how we're rebranding recycling, look for hashtag rebranding recycling on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit sustainabilitymatters.earth. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are on the screen today with Nancy Horton and her son, Chris Horton. They are the owners at Horton's Nursery and Garden Center. I'm sure you have driven past it on 522 at some point in the last couple of years. We talked in the first segment about their long history here in the Winchester Frederick County area. Chris, when we went to break, I was asking you about events. I saw your thrifting event that you're hosting this weekend and that you do on a regular basis. And I am all in for a good oh, yeah. deal and for recycling yeah. and being as sustainable as I can. Tell me how the thrifting events came to be. It was last winter when we first started talking about it. We do a lot of moving around in the wintertime in the greenhouse. Heat sometimes is a struggle. The plants that like it warm, we consolidate them into the plant room. And then we have a lot of space that gets a little bit too cold at night for those plants. So it stays empty most of the winter. So it was last winter we were looking around. We said, you know what? This would make a fantastic indoor yard sale. So we threw it together last year. We did most weekends in February last year. This year, we've got a few more things going on in the wintertime. So we've got it going on this weekend, Friday and Saturday on the 26th and 27th. And in February, it's the 16th and the 17th just have tables set up? Do people bring their stuff? Can I just come shop? How does it work? Yes to everything. We have all the empty tables that we generally use for plants available. Most of those are six foot by eight foot tables. 17 to 20 vendors can be here at any given time. If there's fewer, we'll have more space between each. We could always lift that table out of the way if vendors prefer to use their own tables. And yeah, shopping, obviously, we want as many people to come in here and take a look at the things that the vendors have. We've got craft vendors, and we've got some things that are used, gently used items, that sort of thing. And we do have our house plants and things available to look at house plants, growing supplies, and outdoor plants even. They can come in anytime from 9 to 5 those days. 
it's fun talking to different vendors. We found out last year that there's really some neat people. There always has been in the Valley and they have a lot of good stories about things that they have for sale. And it's just fun to yeah, see we've different had antique people. vendors have come in, handmade jewelry, handmade woodenwares, that sort of thing. In addition to things that people have collected over the years. People are Definitely. downsizing a lot now. I know I had to. People donate a lot, but then there's some things that you just maybe want to get a little money out of and people like to buy that stuff. It's perfect for us in the wintertime because we don't have those cold sensitive plants there. So we've got this large empty space and it's great for the folks that are used to setting up at the flea market or outdoor events. Mm -hmm. But some weekends in wintertime, you never know, it's going to be freezing. We well, do have bathrooms as well. This, this weekend in particular, they're saying it could be in the 60s, but there might yeah. be rain. Rain isn't going to mm -hmm. impact people being able to enjoy this either because you're indoors and undercover. That's mm -hmm. right. So it's going to be good and cozy in the greenhouse. There will be a few drips here and there in the greenhouse, but overall, you'll be out of the rain for sure. Do people have to register or let you know that they want to come and set up a table, or do they just show up Friday morning at 9 o'clock with their boxes? Mm -hmm. They can try showing up Friday morning, but it's best to let us know, mainly for the fact of we're going to have fewer vendors. We're not going to have them so close together. But if we know we're going to have several vendors, then we'll do some shifting around on Thursday, Friday morning, and we'll make the table for everybody. They can always call us. And um, even if they can't do this weekend, you do them on a regular basis. So they can call you up and say, hey, I want to set up a table at the event you're doing in February. And then that gives them a chance to maybe walk through their house or in my case, go into my husband's room and <laughs> pull all the things that I am tired of looking at that he never uses and bring yeah. them to you. <laughs> yeah, you got to be slow to that. One item at a time might go unnoticed. <laughs> oh, yes. If I had a dollar for every time I have said to him, honey, I don't know where you put that when I know exactly where it went <laughs> I would be a yeah. rich woman and he could have his own shed out back with all of his stuff <laughs> meanwhile the poor guy's losing his mind <laughs> <laughs> right. sorry yeah. honey if you're listening today I'm very sorry <laughs> he's on to and, you now <laughs> and then you're opening on a Sunday for an event a Galentine's shopping event which sounds amazing it looks like you've got such mm -hmm. a wide variety of things that people are mm -hmm. going to be able to shop and enjoy that day. That's going to be a really special day. It will be the only Sunday that we're open in the wintertime. We have it running from noon to four. That is Super Bowl Sunday. This being a Galentine's Day event, it's a good way for girlfriends to get together. Or for guys to find their wives mm -hmm. or girlfriends. Yeah. Something to nice. sneak out of the house. Say, hey, I need some more nachos. I'm going to pop in and grab some jewelry. Or some handmade soaps and some really crafty wooden crafts that are going to be there that day. We have a full list of vendors signed up to be there on our Facebook page. We regularly post the Galentine's Day event, but there's going to be some really unique, all local, and most of it's handmade right here locally by and these vendors. Did I see on that event there's a traveling bartender? There is. Yeah, so that one is going to be Mixin with Mel Mobile Bartending Services. For this event, there's no alcohol. That's something that we might look into down the road for future events. But she's going to have some really delicious hot drinks. Ooh. It's going to be perfect for February. Some hot chocolate, some cocos. Come check it out for sure. Just but, being able to connect with somebody that has a traveling bartender business is 100% something I need to know about. <laughs> there's going to be food and drink there. Franklin Smoke and Barnyard is going to be here serving food. Cakes by Ashton is going to have her handmade vegan nut-free cupcakes available right here in the shop. She's been a big help in putting this together for us, too. She's opening a shop for the springtime in Strasburg. I heard that there was another bakery coming to Strasburg, and I didn't know who it was exactly. So that's good to yep. know. This will be a good chance to get a preview of what she's going to have there. She was here before Christmas. She has a good following. People know who she is, but there's a lot more like other handcraft artists and things like that. And the big game doesn't even start till the evening. So it's right. typically, it's easy so enough. Could, you could yeah. come out and walk around and see what all is here. 16 vendors in total. Is it too late if somebody is listening today and they want to be a vendor? Can they still reach out to you for that? We want to make everything really great for these vendors that are coming. So we've got Magnolia and Birch Candle Company. They're going to be one of the few candle makers at this shop. We've got Milk and Mama Soaps. 
She's going to be one of the few soap makers that makes handmade soap. I believe it's mostly goat's milk that she uses on this. So we're being a little bit selective on this. We want everything to be fantastic for the vendors. And there are some really unique ones coming here. We do have two jewelry ones, but they make two different styles of jewelry. As of now, yeah, the 11th is covered, taken care of. But we do have plenty of vendor space for this weekend and the one on the February 16th. And that would be a great way for any of the vendors that want to come on the 11th and you're full to still be able to showcase their products. Because you mentioned earlier, a lot of the people that are coming for those thrifting day events are also crafters and artisans and small business owners. Yeah, it's a great way to get in front of a new audience. Some folks travel in some distance for those thrifting days. They're about 40 minutes to an hour away. They're bringing their things here to get people to see it that don't typically see it. I love that you're doing events like this. I think it's really cool to be able to see how a business that we traditionally only think of during the spring, summer, and fall is able to pivot and do things to include the community and get people inside your greenhouse during a time when we wouldn't normally have you top of mind. I think that people will enjoy just seeing all the different things that people do have. And it's really amazing that we have a lot of really neat artists in this area that people don't know about. Some they do, but some they probably don't. So it's a good opportunity to meet other people too. Yeah, and in the wintertime, we do have a little bit of extra time on our hands because it's a little bit slow during the week. But we have something going on pretty much every weekend. Of course, January is almost over with, but all the way through February, And we're looking at setting up things for March as well. It might take on a little bit different atmosphere. It may not be in the center of the greenhouse because we will be getting plants in that time of year. But we do have space off to the side that we can utilize for showcasing other businesses and working with them. And you've got plenty of parking there. That's the one thing that sometimes keeps people away is, oh, I don't want to try and figure out how to park. You've got a ton of parking there. Oh, yeah. It circles on around even where you can't see. We've got five acres here on site. So I have to ask before we wrap up about the old truck. Did either of you ever drive that thing or has it never been drivable? Is it the yellow truck you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Some people like it and some people don't, but... (laughs) I always wanted something to put out front with our name on. I bought it off of a guy and had it painted. My niece painted it. Your granddaughter did some of the painting on it. It was never used by our business. And the time that we've had, it actually hasn't even had a working engine in it. Yeah, it But it does reminisce of the old days when dad was using the family traveling van to do plant deliveries. Yeah. We had one of these, we call it the green and white van, which is Still. on the property around the corner. Dad used that to deliver poinsettias, Easter plants. We've always been a a utilizer of vans around here. (laughs) Old trucks and things that'll go, but just... Needs a little extra love. Yeah, (laughs) love. (laughs) We enjoy fixing it up sometimes and putting different things in it for seasons, which we don't do in the winter, but... Helps grab your attention coming over that hill. I love it. I just think it's like the coolest thing to see sitting there. And it's so inviting. It makes you think, oh my gosh, I want to go in and see what else they have inside. Because those old trucks that people use like that, you see them sometimes at breweries and places like that. I just think they're amazing. If for no other reason, I want to look at it up close and then come in and go through the greenhouse. Yeah, We've played with the ideas of bringing that inside and using it as part of the display here, which is a possibility maybe one day. You'll get to see it up close inside the greenhouse. (laughs) Tell me one more time, where are you located? Give me your address. 2731 Front Royal Pike. That's considered Winchester. Our phone number is 540-869-2115. Hours for wintertime are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 9 to 5. And then the Galentine's event on Sunday, the 11th, is a special event that you're open for just for that event. Yeah, Mm -hmm. February 11th, Galentine's Day, will be open noon to 5 on that day, on that Super Bowl Sunday. You have a Facebook page that people can follow you and see all of the different events as you come up with new ones and as new things are added. Facebook is probably the best place for people to go and see. Yeah, that's the easiest place for us to keep updated information on. We do our best to keep it updated, but it is Horton's Nursery and Garden Center on Facebook. Thank you both for taking some time to chat with me today. I do appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate your calling us. We appreciate you very much. 
Thank I will you. be back tomorrow. Lisa Sip from Shen Arts Council is going to have a conversation with me about some of the events they have coming up in the next couple of weeks. I know they're working on the banners that you see hanging downtown, the Artscape banners. So she's going to give us details for that. Meet me back here for it just a few minutes after noon.